How many of you know that God has a blessing with your name on it? <laughs> Y'all really believe that? Amen. You know that? Amen. Praise God. Amen. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 11, starting at verse number 4. Amen. Then we'll jump around just a bit. Now when you got to say, I see it. The word of God says this. Jesus answered and said unto them, go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Now, if you don't mind, turn to verse number 28. And it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He says, And I will give you rest. Verse 29 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. I'm going to read that part again. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let us use for a thought on this Sunday afternoon. Simply, it's been a long time. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's been a long time. Look at somebody else and say, somebody else, it's been a long time. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and mighty God, we've come thanking you, Father, for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. This wonderful, monumental celebration in the Chester community. Welcoming the Rock Hill, Great Falls. Chester, Clover, Lancaster folk from all over, letting them know that you are still a mighty God. But oh God, we pray that you will forgive us of our sins. We pray that you will create within us a clean heart, Father, and renew a right spirit within us. Help us, hold us, set us free, not just from the world, but from ourselves as well. We pray, oh God, that you would preach to me as I preach to your people. Teach me as I teach them. Have mercy upon me, O oh God. It's through your word, your spirit will have mercy upon them. In Jesus' holy and precious name, I pray. Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, we find Christ in his period of popularity. And that's a good period to be in because everybody wants to be your friend. Amen. This is a wonderful opportunity for Christ to win souls unto God. They were interested in everything that he had to say. As a matter of fact, he did not just speak the words, but he also uh, put his words into action. Amen. Dead people were rising from the dead. Deaf people were now hearing words from man. Blind people were now seeing when they could not before. Lame people who could not walk were now walking. As a matter of fact, Christ had so much power that he was healing folk without even gazing upon them. Without even saying a word. As a matter of fact, if you were just in his presence, are y'all walking with me? Amen. God anointed him and blessed him in such a fashion that even his clothing had power to heal. Are y'all there? Amen. Every now and then, every now and then, someone would approach him and, and recognize how much power he had. As a matter of fact, there was a centurion that said, oh, you, you don't even have to come to my house. Just speak the word in my servant. Are y'all walking with me? We'll be made whole. Now, now that's power. Now, that, that's, that's power when you don't even have to be there. Amen. And so affected by your ministry. What we find where in his period of popularity, as with everywhere else, there are people who 
just will not believe. Folk who fail to act right. Folk who fail to get it together. Regardless of how good God had been to them, there are still some folk who will not believe. We, we have folk like that today. God has brought them. I heard an older saint say from a mighty. Amen. Long way. Amen. In and out of the hospital, God was there. When you were broke, God was there. Family sick, God was there. Funeral homes, God was still there. Divorce, God was there. But do you not know that we have real fast immediate amnesia? Right when God puts us back on top, we forget all that God had done. But this was a problem. This was a problem with these folk. They knew that God was able, but they had forgot that God was willing. Are y'all there? It's all right. It's all right to know that God can, but God wants you in a position to know that he will. Even when folk, your friends, any of your fake friends, tell you that he can't, God says I can. Yeah, 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 but notice... My brothers and sisters, he's trying to teach them how to get to the kingdom. He's trying to teach them how to get to the good place. And the word of God said, Jesus answered them. Who is them? Well, John the Baptist, my brothers and sisters, at this point was having a rough time. He was in prison, locked up, in jail, in the innermost part of the jail. A place where folk couldn't break you out if they tried. He heard that Christ had come through town and he sent a message with a couple of his disciples and said, go and find out if this is the Messiah or do we still wait for somebody else? Are y'all walking with me? I don't know, but I believe in my mind's eye that old John the Baptist had some intuition that if this was God, then he would be all right. Yeah. If this is a true and living God, then surely he would come and see about me. Yeah. Are y'all walk with me? Anybody ever been in that position where you have been down and out and nobody else can help you? Yeah. And you wait on God and you keep waiting on God and you expect him to show up, but you keep waiting on God at night. You're crying when you wake up. You're crying, you go to work, crying, come home, crying. And you began to ask the question, where is my God? Yeah. You see other folk getting blessed? You see other folk living well? But where is my God? I don't know, but maybe John the Baptist had something in his mind, maybe an ulterior motive, to say that if God knew that I was here, if Christ knew that I was locked up, then maybe he'll come see about me. Do you not know that God does not work on emotion but on logic? He's about building his kingdom and bringing those that are lost to a place where they can be found. Why was John in prison in the first place? He, he hadn't done anything wrong. And, and it makes me believe that even in the Bible days, folk were being ostracized and criticized for doing the right thing. Oh, yeah, now. Yes, Herod Agrippa of Galilee had a problem that he loved his brother's wife. And he would do anything possible to get his brother's wife. So he slept with his brother's wife, went back home and began to think about his brother's wife to a point that he could not get his brother's wife out of his mind. So what does he do? He goes back and he sees his brother's wife and he said, woman, I gotta have you and we'll make it right. Let's get rid of your husband. Are y'all walking with me? So he ends up with the sister-in-law. Did y'all get that? John called with it and said, brother, ain't right. You're wrong about that. That's, that's, that's not cool. God is not pleased with that. God, God is going to get you for that. But uh, 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 Herod Agrippa of Galilee said, that's all right, but I'm going to get you first. Put the man in prison for telling the truth. Anybody ever felt that someone oppresses you, pushes you down, talks about you, mislikes you, dislikes you, walks away from you just because you tell the truth? All right. All right. Yeah, there was a problem there. So John, I was only in prison, but he was in prison for doing well. 
Christ. Now that Christ is in town, he, he's not too concerned because he's been teaching the word of God. He's been preaching the word of God. He's been singing the hymns. He's been doing everything that he's supposed to do. And now he's been in jail for a long time. But here comes the Savior. How many of y'all know sometimes you got to go through a storm? In order to appreciate the sunshine. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Because when that sun comes out, boy, you don't care who looking at you. You rejoice. <laughs> Amen. You in that storm way too long. I don't care how I look. I don't care how ever the face is. I'm going to praise God. No shoes. I'm praising God. No shirt. I'm praising God. Yeah. So he said, I want y'all to go and make sure this is him. And when you see that it's him, let him know where I am. Yes. So he can come see about me. Now we go to verse number 23. Right before that, they find out that this is the Messiah. They walk up to him and say, are you the one or should we look for another? John the Baptist wants to know. He said, I tell you what, you go and tell John this. He said, listen here, listen here, listen. Now, what I want you to tell him is what you see and what you hear. I'm not going to try to convolute your mind. I am not going to try to change your opinion of me. I am not going to try to tell you something that's not true. I want you to open your eyes and listen carefully to the testimony of the people. That's why your testimony is so important because there's somebody on every corner in every win trying to find something just to hold on. Are y'all walking with me? So he said, tell tell John this. He said, go and show God, John, again those things which he do hear and see. The blind receive sight. If you don't believe that, Go and find Bartimaeus. See if he's still on the side of the road. As a matter of fact, he recognized where and who God was. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, regardless of the distractions in your life, you got to push things aside and keep pushing your way toward God. Doesn't make a difference how I look to you. How I look to you is not important. But knowing that your faith in God is still strong and he can do anything but fail. Yeah, yes, I can't say anything, but when you've done all this stand, just keep standing. And y'all walk with me. He said, tell him that, that, that the blind folk have received their sight. And lame folk who could not walk. If you don't believe that, go down to the pool of Bethesda and see if that man is still waiting for the water to be troubled. As a matter of fact, they told me in the word of God that every time the water would be troubled, somebody else would beat him in a pool. Oh, yeah, yeah. But how many of you know that your blessing is your blessing and what God has for you? Yeah. Amen. It is for you. Isn't it right? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. He, he went on. He says, the lepers are cleansed. Now, that was a big one because folk didn't even walk close to lepers. They had to walk at least 30 yards away from the lepers. The preachers wouldn't even go close to the lepers. You couldn't even be inside the city walls if you were a leper. When you died, they buried you in a dung hill if you were a leper. But God says, even the lepers have received my healing. Are y'all walking with me? Maybe there's somebody in the room today who don't believe that God is powerful enough to fix your problem. <laughs> Anybody who can make water in the dry land. Anybody who can make manna fall down from heaven. Anybody who can make water stew from a rock can do anything in my book. Are y'all walking with me? used to be sinners but now you're saints that's a big deal that's something that God did you didn't do it big mama didn't do it grandpapa didn't do it God are y'all walking with me God did it now I'm almost done y'all don't want to worry too much but he said not only are the lepers cleansed but he said that deaf folk now here in addition to that dead folks being wild and dead folks got up out of the grave if you don't believe that, go look in the grave and see if Lazarus is still in there. I guarantee you, he's not there. If you don't mind, why don't you go down to the...
procession of a funeral and see how God stopped by and said the damsel is not dead. Are y'all walking with me? God is still powerful to do all things but fail. And if you are dead in your spirit, God would resurrect that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of us have been in our messes. Some of us have been in our distress. Some of us have been oppressed for far too long. And you need to look toward heaven and say, God, it's been a long time, way too long. Yeah. Now, notice, if you will, my brothers and sisters, he didn't stop there. He said, now, look at this. He's going to digress just a bit. He said, and blessed is he, blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Now, what is he talking about? He's talking about the folks who were not normally let in. Remember what he said about the poor. He said, even the poor received the gospel of God because you had some big time sedated folk who thought that the only time somebody can get into the kingdom is if they walked into the sanctuary. The only way they can get into the sanctuary is if they were a certain type of folk. Amen. Amen. Don't you know we got some of that crazy ideology right now? You can't get in unless you're a certain type of folk. Amen. Praise God. He said, listen, listen, even the poor folk, I don't care what you do. You can keep them out of the church house, but you can't keep the church from coming to them. I want y'all to get that before you go home now. Now notice, notice the word of God continues. He He's really laying it down thick on them, letting them know that, guess what, it's not about you. <laughs> not even close. You think you got it going on, but you're clueless. If you think you can stop the poor, if you think you can stop anybody from receiving the word of God, he says, even the poor shall receive the gospel. Right. Now, recognize and realize that in coming to two, and understand of all that now the word of God has now become into fruition to me because now I can see exactly what he mean I know now that no matter where I am God is there no matter what I'm going through God is there no matter what I'm going through God is there yeah, yeah. yeah he says I want you to get this in your spirit children of Israel he says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden well, he had begun to pray unto his father. And he said, thank you, Lord, for those that you have given unto me. Thank you for the appointment to try to change somebody's mind. Thank you for the opportunity to touch these that are lost. Thank you for the opportunity to touch those who are downtrodden. But I will tell them, oh God, that I still am their God. I am here for them. I am fighting their battles. I am keeping their cord. Notice what the word of God says. Even those who are rejected and dejected come. Everybody, Everybody. can come. Doesn't make a difference Everybody. who your parents are. Doesn't make a difference what you did yesterday. Come. Yes, are y'all walking with me? Yes, oh ye, I want you to get this good in your spirit that labored and are heavy laden. Now in the Greek text, those are two different words, y'all. Don't mean the same thing. Now what Christ is trying to tell us in the Greek text, it says, come on uh, unto me, all ye that labor. That means burdens that you have caused upon yourself. Are y'all good with that? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because we have this strange phenomenon where we bring bad things to our lives. And unfortunately, some of the decisions and the bad things that we bring on our lives, we know they're bad before we do it. Are y'all with me? I say it all the time. You know she wasn't no good for you. Why you would? You know he was going to do your own. Why you go after him? I'm just being real with you. But it can cause a lot of Greek term labor upon your own spirit. So complaining because of the predicament that they put themselves in. Let me tell you something. Folk can't get you out of mess you put yourself in. That requires a real good God. He says here, yeah, I will... I will take care of that. I, I, I will fix that. I, I want you to come to me. All of you that have done harm to your own spirit, I want you to come to me. 
I didn't ask you to go to the Torah. I didn't ask you to go to the Pharisees. Don't stop by the way of the Sadducees. Come unto me. Are you with me? All that labor and are heavy laden. Now heavy laden is different because that's trouble that other folk put on you. Are you with me? Anybody ever been in that position before where life is going good? Amen. You waking up smiling finally. Going through your day smiling finally. Do a whole eight hours with the hell at your job. You still smiling. Because God got you in the good place. Are y'all walking with me? Then come that one thing that tweaks that one nerve that gets you from saint to amen. Amen. You've done all you can to avoid them, but here they come. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You kept your peace all day long. Smile on your face. Two minutes before you got to go home, and here they come. Satan setting you up. Huh? That spirit is a spirit of heavy ladenness. Get in your car thinking you're doing the right thing, going home and get home and the house all messed up. Husband didn't go to work, laying on the couch, no food cooked, dishes in the sink, yard needs to be mowed, kids are running around, bringing home bad grades. Now here come another light bill. Amen. But, but you still supposed to smile. What's wrong with you? Amen. Amen. That's being heavy laden. But God says that even if you have exterior problems, external problems, problems from other folk, I want you to come too because I have something for you. Yes, sir. Isn't that wonderful that God does not have respect of person? He don't want just the tall people. He's not looking at just the pretty people. Not concerned with just the handsome folk. Because I'd be out of all three of those, y'all. My goodness, I'd be. <laughs> Praise God. I love him for that. Amen. Amen. He says, come unto me. All you that labor that are heavy laden. Now notice this, my brothers and sisters. reason why he said, and I will give you rest. They were looking for a savior of the politics, a political savior, someone who will take the oppression from the government off of them. But God is saying, listen, I have something better than freeing you of taxes. I have something better than freeing you from the rules and regulations. I will give you supreme rest. Now notice he wasn't talking about sleeping. He was talking about rest for your soul. Because when you have a restful soul, you can sleep. Thunder of life all around you, you can sleep. Folk coming against you on every side, you can sleep. Problem on every corner, you can sleep. When God gives you a peaceful soul kind of rest. Amen. Two minutes before crack out time, you're not worried about folks approaching you. When you get home and the house is a mess, well, you still be upset with that. But God will still give you. Hey, don't, don't pretend like y'all don't know what I'm saying. Amen. God will still give you rest. Now, every time someone brings up a problem, they ought to have some type of solution, amen? You know, it's not beneficial to anybody if you always bring up stuff wrong, doing bad things or whatever, but why don't you tell me how to correct that behavior? Why don't you tell me how to fix that, that problem? Bring a solution. Well, notice that every time God puts some heavy stuff on his children, he always gives them a way to escape. Are y'all there? Notice what he says. And, and I want y'all to get this good in your spirit because we're going to talk a, a few Greek terms so we can understand what's going on. He says, take my yoke upon you. And remember, I always tell you that God uses instances of things that the folks are familiar with. He was not into talking over people's heads. He, he was not talking to you. He, he just made it plain, man. He, he put it in kindergarten terms. 
He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. The government had their own yoke. The Torah, the Septuagint, the early manuscript had its own yoke. The law had its own yoke. Even the folks in the church and the synagogues had their own yoke. But I want you to get this now. God says, I want you to bypass all that. And I want you to take my yoke because my yoke is easy. Now, what do you mean by that? I cannot picture in my mind a yoke being easy. What is a yoke, my brothers and sisters? A yoke is a wooden carrot that goes over the heads and onto the neck of the oxen. But notice that every single yoke was handmade and it was tailor-made for the neck of that oxen so they would not bind, it would not pitch. It was perfectly fitted for its neck. Right. And if you study and study it well, you would understand that one side of the yoke was huge and the other side of the yoke was a little smaller. That's because they were always breaking in and teaching the younger oxen how to walk. I want y'all to get this good in your spirit now. What the master would do of the oxen is they would put a well-learned, well-versed oxen on the left side and a novice, an amateur, a new oxen on the right side. And every time that little oxen would try to go off course, the big oxen would just pull it back into row. Are y'all walking with me? Well, what does that have to do with me? has a whole lot to do with you because he says take my yoke upon you in the Greek text we find out that Christ is telling us that you will be on the right and I will be on the left every time you deviate to the left or the right I'll put you back in course every time you misstep I'll get your cadence right Every time you want to quit, I nudge you to keep going. Yes, sir. So, so take my yoke upon you and do what? Learn of me. Yes. He says there's some benefits to that because it's not the kind of yoke you think. He says I am meek. That means I'm weak and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your soul. Now notice that's the second part of finding rest. You cannot find rest on your own and you cannot find rest if you're not willing to go through something. If you're not willing to go through the pulling of the yoke, you can't find rest. If you cannot depend on God to lead and guide you, you cannot find rest. Many of us have gone through the storm for way too long. God is trying to tell you to take it up on you. Learn of me. He says, for my yoke is easy. Doesn't mean it's going to be problem free. Doesn't mean it's going to be worry free. Just means that you won't have to pull the yoke by yourself. Because I'm there on your left side. Bringing you up when you're weary. I'm there to help you continue to go in the right direction. He said, and my burden is light. Kind of reminds me of a story as we close about a young lady who really loved to live life and then the lady somehow was contracted with a disease at a very young age but I heard that this young lady loved life to the point where everybody loved when she was around are y'all walking with me? Every day that there was a party, they would call on this young lady. And as soon as she walked through the door, I heard that this young lady commanded attention. Everybody that was standing around the wall noticed her when she walked in the room and folk who were still and not moving at all would begin to shake their hips and pat their feet 
this congregation today. We here at the Cedar Grove Baptist Church believe in a true and a living God. We know for a fact, y'all, that it's a long time that we've been in a state of unproductivity. But now God is making ways out of no way. He's blessing us more than we can ever be blessed. He's taking care of us when we couldn't take care of ourselves. He's protecting us from the determination of Satan trying to turn us around. But I promise you that if you fall in love with Jesus, that would be the best thing that could ever happen to you. Notice that God is still healing people, still setting folks free, still loving the loveless, still giving shelter to the homeless. So if you are here,